I've been building ukuleles for about 10 years now. I'm building uh, high-end ukuleles. They go to professional musicians and to collectors and so on. $1,000 would be for a starting price for my sopranos, but most of my tenor instruments, which are what most uh, professional players play, would run in the three dollars to $4,000 range. I sell maybe four or five, half dozen a month. Since I started this, you know, at the time I thought it was a growing business and it hasn't stopped in the last 10 years. It's gone from being a, quite a phenomenon in the United States to being a pretty, pretty global phenomenon. I sell most of my ukuleles overseas. There was a very nostalgic part of the ukulele growth that people got into it. They remembered their parents in the ukuleles and that, that drove a lot of sales. But nowadays it's definitely the young folks that are, are making their own music. I started making ukuleles as, a, as just as a hobby, just as a respite from, from the tech world. I went to a, one of my first ukulele festivals, which was a gathering of several hundred people, all like-minded. I sold all my ukuleles and they kept asking for more, so I had orders, I kept doing it, and I, I never went back to, to my high-tech job. The ukulele is not very big, it doesn't take a lot of materials. There aren't any big giant tools that are needed, so it doesn't take much to fund a, a single-handed ukulele maker. The way I build ukuleles is I, I separate it into two steps. And, and the first step is really very private, and it's one where I get to work in the shop. I get to handle the wood and choose the wood. And even though a client has a lot of say in how the ukulele is supposed to look, it really is up to me to, to how, it, how it sounds. But once this instrument gets made and gets sold, it becomes something else, and, that, and it carries on. 